Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Stone with Toy Wizards, that's toy-wizards.com, and I'm back for another retro toy review. And today we're going to be checking out my Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Megazord collection. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe to Toy Wizards on YouTube so you don't miss a single one of our updates. Because remember, we update all the time! I don't want this video to be exactly the same as my Dragon Zord and Green Ranger collection, which you can see is right behind where you are. It's right behind me there. And so I talked about my love of Power Rangers um, when I started watching Mighty Morphin, my history with collecting Mighty Morphin Power Ranger stuff. Like all of that is in that video. So I will just link that in the description below. You get to see me cry when I talk about the Megazord standing up and taking those first steps after a Megazord sequence has been initiated. Like it meant a lot to me um, because I was in a dark time at eight years old. Like life has been, life's been a lot, man. <laughs> but today it's Power Rangers. I had mentioned in my Green Ranger video that I did not have any Power Ranger toys as a kid. Like, they, I never saw them on the shelves, I didn't think to ask for them, I, I just didn't know because when I was living in Israel and Power Rangers, that's when I got into Power Rangers even though it had aired the year previously when I was still living in the US, I just didn't look at it. It was one of those things all the boys were getting into and I just didn't get into it until, you know, a year later. So I just wasn't aware that there were any toys of it. And then of course by the time I wanted all those toys, there were no toys to be found and I kind of tapped out after Zia was started. Um, I just started, sort of grew out of Power Rangers and it just didn't hold the same appeal. Today I have many Megazords and of different seasons. I'll show all of those off in another video coming up in another retro toy review. But of course the original Mighty Morphin Megazord holds a special place in my heart and so I look at it and it gives me the warm and fuzzies. A lot of people get very like, why do they keep reissuing Mighty Morphin Megazords? And the answer is for people like me. Um, as, as, as long as there's a Mighty Morphin Megazord, I will buy it. I will buy it. Looking at it is power, comfort, and happiness. I love this thing and I will buy a thousand of them. I don't care, I love it. I will do my best to let you know the year that I bought these or the year that it came out because many of these I bought brand new. Legacy Mighty Morphin Megazord. And this one came out, what was it, 2010, 11? 2010, 11, I wanna say, maybe it's on the bottom. I don't know. But I saw this, of course, and lost my mind because I didn't get to have one as a kid. It was very affordable, I got it from Target. And so yeah, I've cherished this since it was brand new. For me, I wasn't following I wasn't really following new toy releases at the time in like 2011, 2010, and just to see this on the shelf was such a big surprise. I was just blown away. And so, saw this guy, bought him immediately. Love, love, love. In about 2011, Bandai released this set of like 12, not set like together, but they released about 12 six inch Megazords from different seasons. So this is the Mighty Morphin one. They did not release a Dragon Zord of this. So they released 12, I bought them all. <laughs> bought them all, love them all. So again, I will show off the rest of this collection when I do my Megazord, my retro toy review of the rest of my Megazords. But Mighty Morphin and Dragon Zord get their own videos. Such, God, like, look, can you imagine if Hasbro released these in Lightning Collection? You can't compete with this, man. Look at this paint. And I mean, the articulation's 100%. Just, uh, love this toy. I Seriously, I, I lurked obsessively. Every Toys R Us until I bought this whole set. Cause back in 2011, I had that time. <laughs> Around a little earlier, maybe also 2010-ish, this was brand new in Japan. This is a Japanese import heavy die cast and so i love this plastic on the sword so it's die cast and plastic but this was an import from japan my husband bought it for me as a gift like i said 2010 i want to say this guy is from 2010 so cool so beautiful so detailed but isn't this beautiful i had the ceramic megazord gamestop letter opener exclusive and it broke so I don't have that anymore. You guys always see me opening things with the metal sword in like several videos. 
um, that was a letter opener that smashed, broke. So I don't have that to show off anymore. This is so cute. This I this is like tchotchke. I don't even remember where I found this. I might have been from some like little claim sale or a box. Like I have no idea where this little dude came from. <laughs> but I love him. I keep him with me. I've seen I've seen bigger newer toys with less paint and detail. I'll show you in a minute. This is Bandai 2017. I'm trying to remember where I bought this. This might have been from Toys R Us or it might be from a set from Target. But it's Bandai. I don't think I have, like, do you remember the same way I had the Dragon Zord and the White Tiger Funko in this scale? I don't think I have a Mighty Morphin Megazord from Funko. This is really fun. Check this out. This is a digital clock from the 90s. I did not get this in the 90s. I got this in 2018. I got this in 2018 at a show. So I love this. Did not pay much for it. I'm sure it doesn't work. I don't really care. The logo fell off, but it's in the cabinet, so I can put that back on. And then here's the Mastodon. Is it plugging? Yeah! Oh! Oh! Woo! Success! It would be cool if you plug in the Mastodon and the time shows up. But yeah, this is a digital clock. Isn't that cool? I know I said that I didn't have a vintage American release, but I didn't say that I didn't have a vintage Japanese release. This is 1991 Bandai. This is Japanese. I love I found this just randomly at a show this is from a swap meet that I got fairly recently this was probably a this is a 2019 purchase yes 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 now I remember this is a 2019 purchase and I, I just look at this yeah this guy was just selling some old Japanese megazords I don't know if it's complete <laughs> I don't know if it's complete I don't care he shoots mastodons what about here <laughs> cool yeah his, uh he shoots his fists but yeah so wheels on the back no dinosaur tail nothing like that i love it just like this and just like this it'll stay but yeah this is 1991 bandai japan and you can tell it's just like just it just looks different there's just chrome and shiny and there's just more stickers and paint and small details that just make the japanese toys stand apart so Here's my Japanese one. This is the new Hasbro one. This is that $40 Megazord that people don't really love that much. It's, I mean, yeah, it's, again, it's $40, which, means, which is by today's standard is cheap. Although I really feel like I bought the Legacy for about $40 as well. Like, I don't think it was much more than that. But, you know, money and times are different. This is the new Hasbro one. I'm forgiving of it. I know a lot of people were very hard on it. My biggest gripe is this just like this... Between... The, it's just this Hasbro white gray plastic. And I just don't like it. If it was darker gray, more saturated, um, I think it would... Stop breaking, you cheap son of a... <laughs> it, it is broken in my hands many times. But this transforms so you can have your zords you can have your megazord i'm a megazord purist i don't have reason to turn back into dinosaurs i don't care i like it the way it is um and again this one has a place in my heart and on my shelf i don't feel gypped but many people don't like this toy it's very controversial and the last one in my mighty morphin megazord collection this is the cheapy cheapy cheap one this was ten dollars hasbro came out last year i never saw it on the shelf scott picked up this one when he saw it randomly at a walmart probably up north where it doesn't seem like there's any nerds because he finds all these goodies up north but yeah this is budget line no paint apps nothing happening um but i like it it's chunky it's sturdy no articulation yeah it, it this thing barely moves arms move so three points of articulation arm arm head I think if this was made in vinyl, so he's had this chunky blue, chunky yellow, red, barely any color, I think this would just be a phenomenal designer piece. But being what it is, this seems almost off-brand for Hasbro. Like when Hasbro cuts corners, it's typically in a much less obvious way. Something about this toy always struck me like it was for the international market. Um, it sort of looks like looks like a Chinatown toy. I mean, let's just be really direct. It looks like a Chinatown toy. 
except it's officially licensed. So I don't know what's really going on with this one, but I do like it still. I still like the head. Um, it has a special place in my collection, and 10 bucks. I like it for what it is. I would have played with this all day as a kid. So I don't really see a problem, but I think it makes for a cool piece, and the story is fun too, right? So that's all I got for you guys today. I'm Lauren Stone with Toy Wizards. That's toy-wizards.com. Stick with our site daily for toy news, reviews, articles, listicles, snarticles, editorials, opinion pieces, and we'll catch you for the next one. So be good, be safe, keep collecting! Bye!